There's no denying that players are very divided on this game, so we went to the depths of the internet to find out from you guys the nitpicks, the complaints, and overall 10 No Man's Sky game concepts that make no sense. Starting off with number 10, those sentinels that roam the planets have some really inconsistent logic. Maybe it's just their poor AI, I don't really know what they're going for, it's very hard to figure out what exactly pisses them off and what doesn't. Okay, you can find a mountain-sized deposit of gold or emerald or whatever and you start zapping it and it takes you like a half an hour to completely mine through it and not a single sentinel will bother you. And then in another situation you could find a little rock or a stalagmite and shoot it and it takes two seconds to mine and then a sentinel will fly over and go nuts and start killing you. I, what do you want from me? I don't understand what I can and cannot do. What is the galactic space law for mining rocks? And at number nine I'll be honest this one's a bit more of a criticism than actually poking fun at the game's logic. Endlessly mining for minerals to me just doesn't really make a lot of sense. Not just really in the construct of the game I'm talking about like me as a player. Why am I doing this for hours. I get sucked into it, sure, and I waste hours and hours shooting my laser at rocks, but wh what am I doing? Like, is this a fulfilling gameplay concept or, or not? I really don't know, and I probably shouldn't have picked this video to have an existential crisis about what I'm really doing playing video games. But I think we can all agree that No Man's Sky is definitely just like an endless grind, and grinding and grinding and expecting different results is kind of like that whole definition of insanity thing. You know, the way they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, I've been doing that for 30 hours now and the results have been the same. And at number eight, here's something that doesn't make any sense to me, okay? It's called No Man's Sky. You're out there discovering planets, exploring the galaxy, identifying and naming new animals and species and rocks and plants. But then if you think about it, every planet has multiple establishments and buildings. Clearly people have been here before. Different alien races have somewhat settled and set up little outposts here and there. You're bound to always encounter one within a few minutes of playing. So really are any of these planets actually undiscovered? Who are you to discover and name them when there's already people living on them. I just think that's a little whack, you know? And at number seven, here's something that drives me absolutely crazy. How come you can't shoot trees and mineral rocks and stuff with your ship's laser when you're flying low to the ground? These lasers can blow up entire meteorites right in front of you and shoot down ships. But when you take this powerful laser and shoot a tree, nothing happens. You can't mine any resources from it. It just doesn't do anything. The planet is basically invincible. It would have been really nice to have been able to mine right through my ship, but I guess maybe that makes things a little too convenient and then you'll never have to leave your ship. But still, if you're one of those stickler for things that just make sense in games, this is definitely not a good point for you. And at number six, here's something that doesn't make sense to me. You discover limitless planets with a bunch of randomly generated new species to discover, and whether it's these new native species roaming the planet, or the alien races that you encounter that are settling the planet, they all just sit there and do nothing all day. Every once in a while you'll see a predator attack its prey, but most of the time they all just wander around grassy fields and do nothing. Look, I understand this game is so complex so they couldn't give these animals, like, you know, super advanced systems, but really, if you think about it, what are they really doing here? That's like an alien coming down to Earth, landing, getting out, and finding just a bunch of humans just standing around in the middle of the street acting like NPCs that don't do anything. And at number five, okay, let me get this straight. You're wearing a spacesuit while swimming, but you still have to come up for air? Okay, maybe the suit is filtering ambient air or whatever, that's how people have explained it, but it's still funny. And look, even if the suit can filter good air out of whatever air the planet is, it can't filter air out of water? Look, I'm no scientist, man, but when I'm hopping around planets that have acid rain and poisonous air and dust storms and lightning storms and all kinds of terrible, terrible things, but I can drown after sitting in the water for two minutes, uh, what? Come on. And at number four, here's something that doesn't make sense to me. It's more of a mechanical thing, but okay, the mining laser and the overheat. You can cheese that overheating bar so easily, it's like, it's almost pathetic. Use your mining laser for a while and it'll start to overheat, but then you can let go and immediately start shooting again and the overheat meter starts from zero. So really the whole cooldown thing doesn't make sense because the gun isn't really heating up. If you could just so easily go back on it and press the trigger again, what's the point of the overheat system in the first place? I know this is nitpicking, but that's what this whole video is about. And at number three, here's something that definitely makes no sense. Whose idea was it to put the sprint button on R3? Like, clicking the right thumbstick should never ever be sprint. That's just kind of like the god-given definition of video game controls. Sprinting is clicking the left trigger or something else. But not R3, that's unforgivable. Sure, I know you can swap it out or whatever, but still, the fact that somebody decided to put sprint on R3 is insane. I'm sure it'll be patched out, or at least I hope it will be patched out if Hello Games has any sense. 
And at number two, look, man, I'm no Neil deGrasse Tyson scientist, man, but gravity on every planet is, is roughly the same. And I think when you're encountering the random massive galaxy of 18 quintillion billion planets, don't you think some of them would have different levels of gravity? Sure, I know some of the planets have big floating mountains in the middle of them, but ultimately you as a player boots on the ground. The gravity is the same for you from a control perspective from one planet to the next. Maybe there's some convoluted explanation for this, like gravity boots or something. I, I don't know, dude. I'm just saying. And at number one, the thing that makes the least amount of sense, especially hearing it from you guys, is the inventory system. Look, if I'm exploring the unknown and storing up resources and going out and discovering things, why am I not prepared to carry a lot? Why do I start the game barely even being able to carry exactly what I need? It's just a very annoying system and pretty much the bane of many players' existence. Of course, you can upgrade that ship, but it still just doesn't make sense why, as an interplanetary explorer man who needs to mine a bunch of resources, you can barely even carry those resources. Maybe that's just the video gamification of it. Maybe they just wanted to make it hard or add some sort of challenge to the game. But it still just makes things feel a little inconsistent and make no sense. So guys, those are 10 game and gameplay concepts from No Man's Sky that just make no sense. Ultimately, you guys know we enjoy these games, we just like poking fun at them, and we want to know in the comments, we know for sure you guys have a lot more to say about this game, so be sure to let us know. If you had a good time with this video, clicking the like button helps us out a ton, and we really appreciate it. And subscribing if you're new is a great idea, because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.